All right, part-time teaching, full-time fun. It's 3 a.m. It's time for my class. I'm so excited. Woo! Hi, Bao Bao. You get a star. You get a gem or whatever it is. You get all the things. You get pizza. Great job. Wow. All right, goodbye. See you next time. sat here and I have literally done that for over two years. <laughs> it's crazy. Two years. I've sat here and I have taught with the VIP kid and the go-go kid. They may be rivals, but you are very similar. So we're going to discuss uh, my experience teaching online with both the VIP kid and the go-go kid because I have literally sat here and I have done pretty much exactly that. Um, of course, other things in between, but at odd hours of the morning at a computer by myself teaching online. So let's get into it I'm about my reflections teaching online over the past two years. Hello, I am Paige and I have been an online English teacher, um, an ESL teacher if you will, for over two years now with both GoGo -Go Kid and VIP Kid. And I have a lot of reflections to share. I know that there has been a lot going on and I am definitely still reflecting on the events of 2020. I'm still reeling, which is why I think it's taken me a while to produce content. Um, but yeah, as far as online teaching is concerned, it is not all five-star reviews and cute bow bows. If you have taught places other than VIP Kit and Google Kit, I still recommend that you watch this video because all of the pros and deltas, as it were, I think are very similar across all of the online ESL companies because they can be quite similar. So I've taught for both VIP Kid and GoGo Kid as an independent contractor. I began with VIP Kid back in December of 2017 and I got hired in January of 2018. I saw some Facebook ads and I wanted to grab a part-time job and it turned into a backup job, now full-time job. Um, where I'm at now. So yeah, I've experienced a lot and I would love to share some of my experience with you guys today and I hope that, that will prove valuable. Feel free to let me know in the comments below if any of these experiences resonate with you or if you have more questions for me about this topic. So first and foremost, I'm going to discuss the things that I love about online teaching. Now, online teaching is not perfect, but there are lots of great things about it. I can do this job from the comfort of my own home. I can do my schedule pretty flexibly. Um, I love my students and I love my families, especially my GoGo -Go Kid families. That is where I spend most of my time teaching online, to be honest. I do not teach much at VIP Kid at all. I've not taught there in over a year, but my contract is still active and those two places are quite similar. I genuinely love teaching English online and I love those classes. I love being an ESL teacher. I'm also really thankful for the opportunity and the flexible work environment. I moved from VIP Kid to GoGo Kid because I wanted a higher base rate. I achieved that goal and then I moved my slots over. So I gave my time to where I made more money, which is what I think most online ESL teachers do as we shop around for different companies and change our schedules as it suits our needs. I don't think that had I stayed at VIP Kid, I would have been able to achieve any raise at all. So I do think that I made the right decision there. So that was a good, um, good move to shop around for multiple companies. That's a good thing to do if you're an online ESL teacher. I began with GoGo Kid when they first did their public launch back in June of 2018. I think there might have been some other teachers a little bit before, but the public launch was right around that time. So right out of the gate, I was able to build a strong student base um, as their students trickled in. And I also was offered some secondary position opportunities, including being a teacher trainer and a workshop coach. I have had the great opportunity of meeting lots of teachers in the online teacher community and I, I know that there are lots of awesome teachers in the GoGo Kid community especially because that's where I spent the most of my time. I train teachers and I run workshops now um, so if you have seen me, um, hi, good to see you, <laughs> let me know if we've met before um, either in training classes or in workshops. 
I've had the opportunity to connect with so many teachers, so I want to give a shout out to um, some people who helped me initially with the mentoring. Because when you're a new teacher, you really do kind of need someone to help you through the initial hiring process. And for me, those people were number one, Hope Williams for VAP Kid. She was the one that got me hired. I had a mock class that didn't go so great. Um, I didn't hear back from the person I used the link originally from, and she met with me on Zoom. She coached me, and back at that time, you were able to either get the lower or higher certifications, and with her help, I was able to get level two through level five, I believe, and I added all the levels soon after that pre-VIP to level seven, and it was easy to get bookings with all of the range of certifications, and I think that that really colored my experience with VIP Kids, so thank you so much, Hope Williams. You helped me get the experience and the training that I really, really needed as a green teacher. Christy Hunter was my go-go kid mama. She basically answered all my questions and she helped me navigate the initial hiccups along the way of working at a new company. I actually got to meet both Christy and Hope at TESOL and here's a picture with me and my two referral moms. And thank you to everyone who's ever answered a question of mine or who has ever just been a friend or you know, supportive. So thank you so much. Big thank you to workshop participants as well because I have learned a lot from workshop participants as well. Now, there is so much opportunity in online education. I really think that I learned how to be an online teacher from my time teaching at these companies online. So I do think that the experience was valuable. So if you do want to learn how to teach online and you're willing to put forth the work and the effort and you know it's going to be difficult, I think the teaching online can still be worth your while, but you have to go in eyes wide open, which is why I am sharing these deltas today. Now a delta is different than a negative because a delta Delta is a symbol of change. A delta is something that must change for the situation to improve. Um, so it's not all cute bow bows and five star reviews as I shared in the beginning of this video. This can be a really hard job, especially long term. Now I'm not talking about one 25 minute class being difficult. I'm talking about many 25 minute classes back to back consecutively over time, um, with little sleep, that can be difficult. And it's a real job, it's not passive income. You don't just sign up and then magically money gets deposited into your bank account. It's not really passive income. You have to log in, make sure you're there for classes. They're quite strict about that. And you have to show up and you have to do a good job every single time because parents can review your classes. Now, burnout is a real thing. You have to really monitor your well-being and you have to constantly adjust your schedule, which can be great. But if you're relying on this as full-time income, you can really wear yourself down. It is possible to work this job seven days a week, 12 hours a day. I wouldn't recommend that because long term that's going to wreak havoc on anyone. I know that I reached kind of a breaking point last summer where I was teaching far too many classes. Right now I'm waking up at three o'clock in the morning to teach and I know that although I feel okay for now and I teach nine to ten classes every day and I have one day off a week consistently and I feel okay, I know that long term that's not going to be possible to do forever. Pay is not going up in this job. Pay is something that I have seen across the board go down or remain stagnant for teachers. As more teachers enter the market, it seems that so do the wages go down. So just know that about this industry. If you're relying on it for full-time income, you might need to put some other things in the works or have multiple revenue sources for it to be sustainable for you and for your family. I live in Georgia right now, which is a lower cost of living area of the United States. I moving to Maryland, which will be a higher cost of living place. And I know that just with that change, I know I'm going to have to make some adjustments because the money I'm making now is great for my area, but it won't go up just because I moved to somewhere that's more expensive. I have been able to maintain my pay rate at Google Kid by teaching at least nine classes on the days that I teach and remaining at credit score level five. If you want more information about that credit score system, I will give you a link down below to explain it, but you really need to be reading the information in your portal. There's already been a lot of discussion about it out there. And I don't want to get bogged down in all of those details because policy changes are up to the parent company. No matter where you are, you can dislike something as much as you want to, but at the end of the day, it is a business. So 
The fact is though, if you're not getting a raise, it is effectively a pay cut with inflation. So just know that you have to always be looking for ways to evolve and change and grow. This has never been a glamorous job, regardless of what you might see posted around social spaces. Even if a few people make a large sum of money, it is more of the exception that proves the rule rather than showcasing that you can make large amounts of money by doing various things with the online teaching space. Again, there are probably a few exceptions that prove that rule. I know that for me personally, student classes have always been the bulk of my income and I've never had a problem with that. I've always found that to be really fair and I love the work that I do, but I think that because I occupy some other roles, I need to speak up on this because some people seem to think that if you do workshops or you train teachers that you make more money and you don't. It really is, at least in my experience, it is about the same rate that you would make teaching student classes or less in some cases. Um, I don't always accept all of the work that has come my way because I have found it not to always be worth my time because if I can make more money teaching student classes, that's how I'm going to spend my time because that's what I love doing the most. And I think that that's important to know because if you're wanting to invest your time, you need to know that it's never okay for anyone to expect work from anyone for free, but if you do work for free, it's probably not going to lead to a paid position of any kind. So I think that that's something that needs to be said um, in our teacher community. So I said it, there you go. I love my job, but I cannot change the writing on the wall when it comes down to payment. I know that my wage will be the highest it's ever gonna be right now, as far as it goes with VIP Kid and GoGo -Go Kid. So. The community has also changed as a result of this news. Um, I don't think that's a surprise to anyone because if the rules of the game change, then people are going to react and have strong emotions about that as well. It's fair because if something doesn't make you happy, you definitely don't need to spend your free time on that. I know that for me, I have received angry messages from people I've never spoken to before. I don't know why. It's happened. I've also been yelled at during a workshop. Don't know why, but it happened. Um, I know there's lots of reasons to be upset, but it's incredibly disappointing when I see other independent contractors turning that rage and emotion towards other independent contractors instead of upwards probably where yeah, that anger and uh, vitriol belongs maybe. Um, and I don't think that anger and vitriol can be um, sustained long term. So if you are angry and you are upset, we need to look for ways to positively channel that so that we can create change in our lives. That's what I personally believe. You can feel how you want to feel, do what you want to do, but others will also react accordingly to, to that energy. So yeah, when I see these angry messages, I just choose not to respond. And I know that there is probably a lot more going on behind the scenes and I do have empathy and compassion. And I also have that same empathy and compassion for myself. And I again remind myself that if I don't enjoy doing something I don't have to spend my time doing it so yeah if you wanted to know where I've been I've been playing video games hanging out with my husband making fun meals it's been, been a good time for the most part at home um, with quarantine even though it's been kind of boring I've been pretty safe and I've been relaxing for the most part because I've occupied some secondary positions I've also had the opportunity to work more closely with some um, home office staff members at GoGo -Go Kid, which means that I've developed some personal relationships with some employees and I know them to be kind and compassionate individuals so this is not going to be a video of bashing individuals at Cougar Kid, but more of a constructive um, response towards things a larger company has done. So I love the people I've met. I had the opportunity to take a personally funded trip, a personal trip that was personally funded, um, fall of 2019, and I met some awesome staff members, had a great time, made some great memories, and having seen events unfold, I was really, really happy um, to have taken the trip when I did. It was a, a great opportunity, and I loved seeing in China for a little bit and meeting some awesome people and some students. And I know that since then, since I did that visit, I know I've seen the office and I've seen that they do have a large amount of employees working at GoGoKid. Kid. And I do know that they've moved into a larger office since then. So all of these constructive things that I'm gonna speak on about GoGo Kid, I know that they have the resource to do so. I also drove by the VIP Kid headquarters. I didn't go in, but I saw it and that was a very large building. So one can assume that they also have resources as well, as an outsider, of course I cannot decide for a company how they're going to spend um, allocations and resources, but it is reasonable to assume that a large 
company can, if they would like to, make improvements about a few things that are suggested. So that's why I'm going to give a few suggestions in this Delta area. Now, there are three steps that I think any online ESL company can take to improve the current situation with retaining teachers and overall staying profitable long term. I think that there are three key things. So if you would like to take my feedback into consideration, any company is welcome. But I know for me personally, I have already shared this feedback multiple times with multiple team members at GoGo Kid. So I know this feedback has already been said um, multiple times there. If you would like to kind of phrase this feedback in your own words, send it off to where you will, you are free to do that as an independent contractor. Um, and as someone who has free speech. If you work somewhere else, you might find there are also similar issues, like I said in the beginning of the video. So my first suggestion um, is just to have more social media presence by salaried employees. I think it's incredibly important to leverage social media to build relationships. And if social media is used to silence or to just not respond to individuals, they are going to get a message regardless of whether you're putting one out or you're saying nothing or you're saying very little. There's going to be a message received. No response is a response. So you need to engage with teachers because if you build relationships relationships, you will also be more likely to obtain what you would like from your teachers as well. If you ask for things and you have a strong relationship, you are then going to receive the things that you have requested at a far higher rate than if you just keep asking and asking and asking without building that solid um, foundation of a relationship. Area number two is faster and higher quality ticket response times. This is incredibly important because this is how issues are resolved. I know I have had tickets go unresponded to for weeks and months before, and I've heard stories from other teachers as well, and I'm sure that it has been um, a reason why people have decided to stop opening slots because issues have gone unresolved. It is definitely within the um, realm of possibilities for large companies to allocate more resources towards more ticket agents and to prioritize faster ticket response times and higher quality ticket responses. I don't think that's an unreasonable ask. I think that is very, very reasonable regardless of the language barriers and time zone challenges. If you have an issue that goes unresolved for a long period of time, of course you're going to eventually move on with your life and take that response or lack of response as the response that it was given. If you give a small copy-pasted response, that's a response. If you don't hear a response after a long period of time, that is also a response. No response is a response. Now, number three, and I think the most important piece of feedback is that when teachers give feedback, it needs to be processed and it needs to be implemented in some way. It needs to be acknowledged, it needs to be implemented. If teachers time and time again receive surveys, receive calls for input, and then do not see that feedback implemented in any way, they're going to know that their feedback is not valued. Because if you constantly give your feedback and that feedback is received and then not implemented in any way, then you as a teacher might just decide to apply your time and talents elsewhere. And if you are listening to this and this resonates with you, I know I have felt it and I see you and I regret that as a fellow independent contractor, I cannot make another company see you the way that you deserve to be seen. I see you, even though I can't make anyone see you the way that you deserve to be seen. So I think that's a, not a large issue, not just for online ESL companies, but in any large organization. I know I've had administrators ask for feedback and not implement it. I've had school systems ask for feedback and not implement it. If an organization, anyone has an issue, it's going to have um, long-term consequences. So if we wanna know why teachers aren't opening slots and these things are happening, that is the work that needs to be done. Understand that when you get feedback, that's the starting point. The work begins there. And yes, it's scary, but there's so much potential in that because all of these deltas could turn into positive things. Truly, deltas can be catalysts for positive change. Now, let's end with some implications. I will always have a soft spot for online teaching. I love my students. I love my families, especially my GoGo Kid families because they got me through quarantine. They've gotten me through some really hard times. 
and it's been a wonderful opportunity and I'm not quitting. This is not a quitting video, but I may have to reduce my hours and I may have to look for new opportunities because of the reasons I've already outlined in this video. And I do believe in the mission of these companies to create a positive connection with students worldwide. And I do think that there's a lot of potential in online education, but that potential also extends outside of online ESL companies. I think there's life after online ESL, there really is. As of right now, I'm just logging in, teaching my bow bows, logging off, and kind of leaving that on the computer and not really engaging too, too much um, in, in the things I've already mentioned above because at the end of the day, that is the beauty of this job is you can log in, log off, and you're in charge of your time. You really can take ownership so we can use and leverage this time to positively change our lives, I think. It just requires a little bit of reframing um, and inventory of our skills. So I know I'm moving in a month and I'm excited about the future. I have had a lot of great conversations with friends recently, which inspired me to create a teacher community called Teachers in Transformation. I'm gonna share the link below. It is just a community where we are sharing links to free courses, we're sharing resources and encouraging each other um, during this time of change and really using it to transform in a positive way. So if that is interesting to you and you would like to join, the link is below. Be sure to follow the rules, agree to them, and type an answer um, to be accepted into the group. So I want to know, what, what do you think? Sound off in the comments below. Let me know if you found value in this video. And yeah, thank you so much for your time. Like, comment, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.